thinking about fats, so we actually talked about MCT. Uh, yeah. But the uh, but another kind of area of fats is uh, long chain fats, the long chain fatty acids and, and omega threes and omega sixes. Are saturated fats good or or bad? <laughs> Yeah, so um, there's been a lot of recent talk of um, seed oils like corn oil or soybean oil or cottonseed oil um, being very damaging fats. And these are primarily short chain omega-3, uh, omega-6 fats, sorry. There are also short chain omega-3 fats that uh, the most Famous one is alpha linolenic acid, uh, abbreviated ALA. And these are essential fatty acids. Essential means we do not manufacture them. We have to get them from our diet. So when people say, oh, these omega, omega-6 fats are evil and they're the cause of problems, well, I'm sorry, they are essential. We have to have them. We have to have them in our diet. The problem is, as I show in the book, that most of these omega-6 fats are associated with processed foods and sugar. And really good research has shown that it's actually the sugar content in these foods that make these fats so dangerous. It's not the fats themselves, it's the sugar. So we're associating the evil with the wrong people. Now, there are some very interesting, good saturated fats. And I go into those in some detail in the book. There's some fascinating a saturated fat that's called carbon-15, C15, that has recently been discovered to be an essential fatty acid. And most carbon-15 in our diet actually comes from dairy. Uh, and Several now large studies have shown that the more C15, carbon 15, you have in your system, the longer you live and the healthier you are. So uh, as people will see in the book, I, I don't throw dairy under the bus, uh, but I actually you know, recommend people getting goat and sheep uh, dairy products, buffalo mozzarella in their diet, water buffalo. Uh, to get these beneficial uh, saturated fats. Now, on the other hand, the problem with a traditional ketogenic diet is it's very heavy in animal saturated fats other than these saturated fats. And as I show in the book, the consumption of these saturated fats actually increase insulin resistance and increase insulin levels. And it actually explains why people on a very high fat diet, a ketogenic diet, begin to have elevated sugar levels, even though they're not eating any sugar, blood glucose, and develop uh, elevated insulin levels despite not eating much carbohydrates or protein. So one thing I saw in the book is you mentioned canola oil. So I, I thought like canola oil was one of these seed oils that you should never touch. So this is like organic canola oil. This is not like the stuff from the supermarket. Correct. Yeah, it turns out I had banned canola oil a number of years when it was pointed out to me correctly that uh, most commercially produced canola oil is uh, canola is sprayed with glyphosate Roundup, and uh, there is actually a lot to like about canola oil, and there are now organic producers of canola oil. Well, what's to like about it? Well, as I mentioned, um, ALA, this short chain omega-3 fat, was the subject of a very important uh, heart disease study called the Lyon Heart Diet, L-Y-O-N from Lyon, France. Most people know it as the Lion Heart Diet because we don't pronounce it correctly. So the, the Leon Heart Diet study took people with known coronary artery disease who had suffered a heart attack, and they were divided into two groups. It was, a, it was headed by a Greek physician. 
And they found one group had to have a Mediterranean diet, but they had to supplement their diet with a, with a, a spread, a, a margarine spread that was made out of canola oil, ALA. The other group had to follow the low fat American heart disease uh, diet, American Heart Association diet. And the study was designed to run five years. The study was stopped after three years because the group on the Mediterranean diet with the canola oil had such better outcomes, far less new events that than the low fat American Heart Association diet that it was unethical to continue the study. So it was stopped. And here's the best part. It turns out when they looked at all the factors in the diet that might have been contributing to this benefit, you know, maybe it's the fruits and vegetables, maybe it's the olive oil, maybe it's the red wine, only the level of alpha linolenic acid, ALA, in their blood correlated with the positive finding. So you look at that and you go, wow, that's pretty powerful. And then you look at actual studies of what alpha linoleic acid does, linolenic acid does, and it actually uncouples mitochondria and reduces plaque and blood vessels. So are there other sources for it? Yes, flaxseed oil is a rich source of ALA. Walnuts are actually a remarkably good source for ALA. But, uh, and also perilla oil. Um, you may know that perilla oil is one of the fundamental oils used in Korean and Chinese cooking. Uh, and perilla oil is a rich source of uh, ALA. So lots of places to get it. Excellent. So just going back to keto a little bit. Uh, so many people, when they, they go on keto, even though they're eating all this saturated animal fat, they say they feel really good, right? I mean, it, it makes them feel. So do you think that there is a long-term po positive or negative kind of effect on keto? That's a, that's a great question. And I, I really talk about this a lot in the book because I see patients every three months and do blood work on them every three months. A lot of this blood work actually looks at whether there's inflammation on the walls of blood vessels, whether the blood vessels are flexible or stiff. And I've had a number of patients who volunteer to, you know, try a new diet, like a high fat ketogenic diet and, or, you know, a carnivore high fat diet. And they come back and they say, gee, you know, I really feel good and I can't wait to see my blood work. And invariably these people have, elevated oxidized LDLs for the first time. They have sticky blood vessels. They have inflamed blood vessels and their blood vessels, which used to be flexible are now stiff as boards. And I see this repeatedly. And I, I liken it to the famous movie Jaws where there's this young lady swimming at the top of the ocean and she's perfectly oblivious to the fact that there's a great white shark about to you know, engulf her. And so when these people see this, they say, oh my gosh, you know, I may feel good, but look, you know, look what's happening. There's a great white shark. So why is that happening? And the main reason is we, unfortunately, excuse me one second, mm -hmm. We need to feed our gut bacteria, our microbiome, fiber, foods that they like to eat, because they in turn make a host of different postbiotics, that's the new term for the byproducts of bacterial fermentation, that actually make our blood vessels flexible, that actually stop inflammation in blood vessels, <coughs> and without giving them this fiber, they literally die off and don't produce these beneficial compounds. And that's exactly what we see in these people doing this. And the interesting thing is when they get scared and see this and go back to my form of a ketogenic diet, which has a lot of fiber in it, those, re those results reverse in three months. And that's, that's exciting to see it you know, come and go and be reversed. Right. And fiber. So fiber is a carbohydrate, but it does Correct. not, but you don't, you don't uh, process it. You're, so correct. 
Yeah, you don't, we don't eat it. Our gut bacteria right. eat it. Those tests you, you said are like oxidized LDL. Uh, would they be caught on a standard kind of panel? No. Never. If you were lucky, you might have a test called HSCRP, C-reactive mm -hmm. protein, if you're lucky. You might get fibrinogen on a panel, but most doctors wouldn't know to measure oxidized LDL. Uh, if you like the cholesterol theory of heart disease, which I don't particularly like, uh, then cholesterol is not bad for us unless it is oxidized, unless it's rusty or rancid, and then it has the potential to stick to blood vessels. Also, we measure vessel flexibility with a couple markers called ADMA and SDMA. And we measure what's called a plaque test, which literally looks at if the blood vessels are lined with uh, fly paper um, for people of my generation, whether they're actually sticky. Interesting. Yeah. So it would be worth getting one of those tests. 